So in this final video of the single level AHP model, we're just going to go ahead and walk through calculating the criteria preference matrix and the final scores. Um, and then I'm going to just play around with the numbers because I think it's interesting to talk about what you might learn from a model like this. So let's just go ahead and we want to take the different criteria here. Um, price, screen size, and screen split screen multitasking, and the three alternatives, and we'll put them here, and we'll take our criteria and put them here. These values are all just the row averages that we calculated earlier. Um, so for price, we can just go up here to the row average, make it equal, um, and then we can just drag it down, and then we go to screen size, row average for the iPad mini, and drag it down. And the split screen multitasking row average for the iPad mini. And looks like I haven't labeled these properly, but you get the point. Um, well, let's just correct that real quick. This is supposed to be split screen multitasking and screen size. So then this for the criteria, this is the same thing, the row averages for the criteria. And then to just calculate the final scores, um, we all we do is, you know, let's put the alternatives down here, and we just use mmult again, and we're going to take this row and this column, and again mmult, all it's doing is it's taking this value times this value plus this value times this value plus this value times this value, or in other words, you know, let's just say this value time times this value plus this value times this value and plus the um, value for the iPad mini for screen, split screen multitasking times the criteria wait for the split screen multitasking. Um, but we're just going to use mmult because that's less error prone. So we'll just select that and we'll select the column. We're going to fix those, the column there so we can just drag it down. The rows up here will just move and the column will stay where it is. So, as you look at the scores, the highest one indicates that we prefer it the most. It says the iPad Pro 9.7. I was actually a little surprised at this, um, given this rating, I, and I wondered maybe did I not set the the house. I wondered how sensitive it was to the to the um, preference I places placed on the criteria. Um, for example, with the price versus the screen size or the split screen multitasking. Um, and you'll notice that if I say, well, I actually, I said that I preferred um, the split screen multitasking over the price by the, the three was moderately preferred it. Um, and even if I just come in here and I say a nine, saying that I actually extremely prefer the price to whether or not I have split screen multitasking, you'll notice that that just barely brings the iPad mini and the iPad Pro, I'm sorry, the iPad Air and the iPad Pro at the same point. If this were just one number lower, an eight, the iPad Pro still comes out ahead. So it's really not very sensitive in this particular case to the um, the weights that I assigned that um, this may be due to the fact that I didn't include some of the other factors that you might consider um, when choosing these but um, I may go further into that in the next in the in as I set up the next model um, I think it's interesting also to just look at some of the things that came up while I was um, playing around with the numbers here um, with the screen size, if we go back and look at 
the is the screen size on the Air, and the 9.7 is the same size. The Mini is a little bit smaller. And I had to say here the iPad Air versus the iPad Mini. Well, I moderately prefer the size of the iPad Air to the iPad Mini. And because the iPad Air and the iPad Pro are the same size, I have to say the same number because uh, it wouldn't make sense to say, well, I prefer a 9.7 inch screen a little differently than I prefer another 9.7 inch screen. So that's just keeping our answers consistent there. And also, um, you'll notice the iPad Air and the iPad Pro 9.7. Again, they have the same size screen, so I have to say that I equally prefer them. Um, and then with the split screen multitasking, the only one that has the split, split screen multitasking was the iPad Pro 9.7. And um, I do prefer that. I had to decide how much I preferred it. Um, and uh, I having it versus not having it, I said I really, really preferred it. Um, having the split screen multitasking. So I put the iPad Pro 9.7 versus the Mini at a 9. And um, then everything else, like the iPad Air versus the iPad Mini, neither one has it, so they have to be a 1. Um, and then the 9.7 compared to the Air and the Mini, both of them have to be 9. Again, because you can't say that you prefer one split screen multitasking to another split screen multitasking because it's the same feature and if they both have it then you have to have the same rating for each. Um, I haven't played around with these numbers. I wonder what would happen if I said well I actually don't care that much about it so let's say I just moderately prefer it. Well then that actually moves this up but then I, of course I changed the um, valuation of the price versus the split screen multitasking. Let's move that back to, oh, I actually prefer the split screen multitasking a little more. And that brings us back with the iPad Pro um, being more important. So it it's interesting, I think, just to look at how the different numbers affect the sensitivity of the model to in your final outcome, in your final scores.